it's Turner from John's Furniture Repair. Thanks for joining me today. We're working on this rocking chair and it's not getting a refinish, but a complete rebuild. And obviously the seat has a big problem here. So we're actually gonna be fixing that, not replacing. So stay tuned. We got a cool little project here to do. Alrighty, so this is a chair that my customer's mother actually refinished. So we're gonna be restoring the finish that she put on here. Um, and it is very red, but it's something that she remembers in her childhood. So we're gonna restore that finish. The chair does need quite a bit of work. We've got a little bit of a contribution from a cute dog. Chewed up one of the lay or the rockers and all of the joints are really rickety. So a complete re-glue of course. And there are some nails sticking out in weird places. Um, some additions, I think. Here, there are some nails as well as up here, we've got a nail sticking right through the seat, ouch. And we've got an entire side that's kind of broken off and a few nails added here for the repair. So we're gonna take that all off and do a proper repair. And the main issue with this piece obviously is the seat. This is a really beautiful peacock design and my customer remembers there being a lot more color. We're not gonna be restoring the color, but we are going to be repairing the seat and giving it some support. So stay tuned for how we figure out to do that. And yeah, so let's just get this thing apart and start working on getting it back to a functional, beautiful heirloom. Okay, I was gonna take the seat off first just to protect it from any damage, but it's really hard to get my pry bar in there. So I'm just gonna take the whole chair apart first and be careful with that piece. So there is a bit of metal. I've seen this a lot in older chairs, people stringing metal across joints just to keep things together. It looks like they were trying to support the seat somehow and um, yeah, just not doing its thing. So we're just gonna snip those off and remove them. I see it a lot in like old, old wooden like kitchen chairs. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but sometimes they're strung along the braces lower in the chair to keep the joints from pulling apart. And although it's not like a beautiful repair, there's something a little bit charming about it because it's usually like old farm type chairs. That's, I don't know, it's kind of cool. Maybe it's because I'm from Saskatchewan. I'm not sure. Okay, so that's off. We've got a few nails to pull here, like I showed you before. So this one is out, but a couple of them we're gonna have to dig out. And I might try to just take the joints apart without digging them out, because they are straight on, so they should just pull out. And that way I don't have to dig a big hole in the side of this situation. All right, this is a tail of a thousand nails. So things don't come out. They've got these serrated metal nails right through these tenons here, or sorry, these dowels. 
So this guy that I'm trying to get out here, that nail is really hard to dig out, so I have to bang it out of place. So the nail pops and then I can grab it. It's still hard to grab. So I'm thinking there's probably nails in every single joint and none of them are really wanting to tap out. So I'm having to dig them in or dig them out, sorry. And so I was gonna take off, because this one's loose here, I thought, okay, I'll get the rocker off and then I'll be able to twist this one and pull the nail out from around the area there. But of course, there's nails in here as well. And they're very difficult to get off. So I'm just gonna work on one nail at a time, the best one I can. And whenever I can turn out and kind of pull the nail out, I will. But this is difficult going here. Everything's kind of really loose, but not coming out, which is super frustrating. So enjoy. All right, so I've got the seat off finally here and it's just kind of delicately held together. So we really need to deal with this first. I don't want it falling apart anymore. So my plan is um, to actually glue, this is a, a pressed paper seat. I thought it was leather, but I don't know why I thought it was leather because it's definitely not um, that workable like with all of this stuff. So it's, you can get a lot of different pressed paper seats still these days, but this one is so unique with this pattern. I just want to repair it. And so we're gonna be kind of putting these back together with just a carpenter's glue, which is water soluble, so it'll work really well. And then once those are on, I'm gonna be putting on painter's tape across to bridge it while it dries. Once that is dry, I can take the tape off and we're actually gonna be gluing a canvas, heavy body canvas across this whole surface and onto the tack strip because that will hold the seat and support these brakes. So it's not like I've done this before, so, um, that's the world of repair. I know how to repair things. And sometimes you get something that you don't have any experience in, but it's like any other break. If you were to think of like a shattered piece of wood, you need to lay the fibers back together the same way. So it's a, a new item, but the same process. So let's get these back together. And I'm just gonna put on this heavy duty, a um, little bit better quality frog tape to hold these together while they dry.
All right, I've let this dry overnight and I just used this bowl to get pressure on the bottom that was all kind of crumbled apart. So I'm just gonna take this apart. It did come together fairly well in most areas. But there is still a little bit of that seam showing, which I expected. But in terms of staying together, it looks fairly good. Now I will um, fill this crack and just try to hide it. We can take all this tape off and look at the back. Yeah, it looks good. Not bad. There are a few gaps in some of the joints, especially this one here and a little bit of this one, but that's okay. I think that's the best I could really get it to go. This one was quite tough too, the sprite that went along here. You can see it's got a little bit of a lip. But in terms of saving the piece, I think we're on the right track. You can see that nice, beautiful peacock design. So, yeah, I think I'm just gonna get a little bit of water-based filler and fill this in. That way um, I can wash it off with water when it's all good. So I'm just gonna actually use my finger because it'd be probably a little bit easier. So I'll just use a little bit at a time and I'll just use it to fill these cracks. And I'm just gonna rub it away as much as possible too. That looks like we got it. So there it is. I am gonna take a little bit of a, a brush and brush away the in the details here because it'll be a little bit harder when it's set up. So I don't want those full of putty. Yeah, and I think I'm just gonna wet my brush a little bit because this stuff sets up pretty quick and I may as well get it off of there while it's a little softer. It is already setting up. And there we are, looking really good. So I think what I'm gonna do first is actually glue an entire piece of paper onto the back. So it re like a really nice wet piece of, of um, paper that's a little bit stronger. And then I'll do the um, canvas over. Cause I just wanna bridge this gap with something that's really gonna contour first to all these little bumps and everything. And then I'll um, put the canvas on after. So I need to go find a nice piece of brown paper that I can just laminate onto here and I'm going to try to as well um, scrape off these little bit of glue chunks that I have left here just to get it to go over and bridge that gap nicely.
All right, so I've let this dry out in the sun yesterday and it's nice and smooth and it's really tight to the form. So it's adding a lot of strength. I could honestly just put, you know, another couple layers of this paper on and it would be fine. But I'm gonna put the canvas on because it's a little bit more um, strong. So I'm gonna cut out this on the paper off of here. So there we are. So I'm gonna get a piece of this canvas out here. Get my good scissors that my lovely YouTube friend sent to me. Okay, so I've got the seat drying with the canvas on, so now I can address the rest of the chair that had a million nails in it, cracks, breaks, loose joints, and this one is definitely needing completely taken apart. So anything that I don't need to take apart, I won't. Um, I think it's, you know, there's so many nails in this thing that the less damage I can do, the better. But I know there are two nails on each side of these, and if I pull this straight apart, they should just come out. So I'm just gonna give this a little tap. Yeah, so the nails are, you can see them sticking, if you can, right out there. So I should be able just to tap that back through. And by that way, there's less damage than trying to dig it out of the other side without having to dig a big hole. So there's that. Now, these rockers are loose, not terribly, but a little bit. And they do have nails on the inside here and here. So I will have to dig these ones out because there's not really any way. If I try to bump them out, they will break this whole piece of wood out here. So I gotta pick what type of damage I wanna deal with. So at least this one doesn't have to be glued back together. It'll just be a fill. And we are trying to save this finish. So we're not trying, we're going to. trying to get around that nail head but it is very much in there so if you cannot get a grasp on the nail head you do have to do a little bit of a dig out just so you can get your pliers around to get any type of leverage on so you know it is damaged that you're causing. But if you don't get the joint apart, then you got a loose chair. There we go. And whoever sent me these pliers, I do remember your name, just not right now, but they are awesome. I'm really happy for the spring, saves my hand. You're absolutely right about that. So there we go. So now I'm gonna get this popped out. And I want to turn this if I can. That way I don't have to dig a hole here, but it might not work with this together. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a try. And just try to lift it out of that joint. There we go. 
Good. So now I want to turn this using the leverage of this to see if I can pull this nail out with, but that might not work. Oh, there we go. Just really gently, because I am putting a lot of stress on this joint as well. Just kind of work back and forth. There we go. So I can see that the nails pulled through on that side. There's a hole there. So now I'm just gonna tap it out. So there you see the nail was twisted around the dowel as we twisted it out of the hole. Unfortunately, I still got a little breakout, but that's okay. We'll just glue that back in place. And that is that side as well, these two are loose. So, leave that there. And I'll just basically have to do the same thing on this side. And again, we have our little doggy chew here, so we'll have to do some repair here as well. So I'll get this apart and then we'll start cleaning it up. Alrighty, so we've got the canvas on. It's nicely trimmed. It feels really good. I'm really happy how this is turning out. It looks like nothing happened, but we do have a little bit of a seam right in the bottom there where I puttied in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a coat of shellac on this. This is just a really thin mixture that I made up. And that's just gonna bring out the colors really nicely. And then I'll be able to see if, you know, what color I need to adjust on that putty work. Yeah, really nice. And my putty work doesn't even show, so I'm not gonna even add any color to this because that's the best way to do it. The least amount of work and the least amount of changing any color or anything on this. You really can't see it, so. Once that's dry, that seed is done. Okay, I got this together. Um, it was really hard. These, There's four dowels that go into this joint, so getting them lined up and all the way tight is requiring quite a bit of pressure. But we've got them really nice and tight, good glue squeeze out on each joint here. So I'm gonna put this aside and uh, we'll work on cleaning up joints and then we can start putting this chair back together. Luckily, this back piece is not loose, so I'm gonna leave that all intact, and we just have to rebuild the base. Alrighty, so I've got this seat put back together. You can see I've got a fastener in there because that section that we had to re-glue was a really bad fit. We did use epoxy because of that, but also it's gonna take a lot of pressure from the arms pulling out towards on that joint. So anything outwards this way is gonna put all the pressure on this break. So we've got a dowel coming in and uh, epoxied. And so these will also be tightly glued as well. So that'll help making that stronger. So um, all the other pieces are ready to go. I haven't fixed the dog chew. I'm gonna do that when it's all together because there'll be other touch-ups as well. So let's get this thing rolling. I'm gonna heat up the, um, the uh, hide glue for this one because that's what they used before and I'll heat up while I'm cleaning out all these joints and the old glue in here.
All right, so I do this because there's a lot of glue on these guys and they're dirty. And one thing about getting a really good strong bond when you re-glue a chair is having fresh wood meet fresh wood with new glue to have that bond too. Glue doesn't stick to old glue. Um, if it's chipping away, it's gonna chip away the new glue as well because it's gonna be on top of it. So you wanna make sure you have some raw wood. You don't have to grind them down, but you just have to make sure there's some raw wood for the new glue to bite into on both sides of your joint. Okay, so I've sanded this whole chair with 400 and also sanded all those little repairs we did and the little toe chews from the dog. He actually cho chewed all four edges of the rockers, but not as much as that one leg. So that's all ready to go. The side, we have our faster in there and the putty work, got that all sanded smooth. Everything else just got like a light sand. So I'm going to be putting a stain over the areas that are repaired and it's just this uh, Verithane Cabernet color which is a really deep red. Looks kind of like what she used on this and try not to put it everywhere just on those areas. So I'm going to wipe this down with mineral spirits um, and do the touch-ups and then we're going to do a coat of shellac over the whole thing. I just, I just spilt all of my stain on the, the table there with my ass, I knocked it over. So, change of plans, just gonna wipe this big old stain rag over the whole chair. Why not? It's beautiful. <laughs> you just gotta go with the flow, you know? The flow of the, the stain all over my table. It's kind of like wiping it down with mineral spirits because it is an oil-based stain. So it's just, I added the color and the stain at the same time. Look at that, looking gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna wipe the whole chair down like that and then wipe it off with a dry rag. Okay, so we've got one coat of shellac on everything. It's very red, very shiny. So I'm going to be giving it a sand with 400 and then giving it a beeswax rub down. It'll get a little bit more into a satin sheen so it'll calm this down a little bit, but it's looking good. And there it is, all finished up, looking very cute, smart.
put together nice and sturdy. Just take a look at that seat. These results I was not expecting. You cannot even see a seam. It looks awesome. I did put a coat of shellac on it and puttied a little bit of the seams, but those are completely gone. You can't even see them. I love how that turned out. So we re-glued the whole chair and I did stain over the whole thing and put a coat of shellac and then beeswaxed the entire thing. So it's got a nice soft sheen now. It's not so shiny. We've got those toes taken care of that the dog chewed. Everything is looking sturdy and good underneath. You can see the bottom of the seat there. That's our canvas. And we got all the tacks back in place, so it'll be nice and sturdy. And I did sit on it, so it feels actually not too bad. Everything's kind of popping and looking a lot nicer. Before it was all kind of dull. But yeah, thanks for joining me on this one, guys. It was kind of a different little project. Tried something new, worked out great. It's always successful when that happens. And uh, if you want to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. The link is in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for being a part of this community and for joining me on these videos. Cheers.